Benvenuto nella famiglia di Gesù Cristo, it's Brother G, and this is the Capo for Christ channel where we take the light of Jesus Christ and we shine his light into the world that continues to get darker and darker by the minute. This channel is sponsored by the Most High God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Secondarily, our sponsors are my restaurant, Gaetano's New York Kitchen. If you're in the Atlanta area, come check us out for a very good meal. You'll have a great time. We will do any type of catering event you guys got. We'll take care of you. Check us out on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook for the chef side of me to see some of the food. Uh, and that's that. Couple announcements uh, before we get started. Uh, recently, Copper for Christ, Brother G, teamed up with Hot Man a Minute, uh, Brother Matthew and his beautiful wife, Sister Lisa, for we did some evangelizing uh, outreach ministry uh, in the streets of Atlanta. And uh, we, you know, it was very good. We fed the homeless, took care of them, uh, loved on them, all of that. So check out the community page for that. And uh, also keep an eye on the community page because recently uh, I did an interview uh, on a podcast with uh, my good friend Bill Stacks, Chatting with Stacks podcast. Check it out. Um, it is a different genre than ministry. Stacks is a very, he has faith. He believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's doing his own thing right now and exposing mafia rats and stuff like that. So keep an eye on my community page because when that podcast is up, I will uh, at least post part of it there. And if you guys feel led, go over to his channel and watch the interview. I do want to warn you ahead of time, you know, when a person gives their testimony, you have control over your feelings and emotions and everything and what you're saying. But when a person is interviewing you um, and asking very pointed questions, it brings, it brought me back to certain parts of my life. And I felt that anger, I felt the hurt, the rage. You know, you got to realize that my uncle was murdered, okay, in 1985 at Paul Castellano. And he has been showed for 30 plus years on TV, his dead body shot up in front of Spark Steakhouse. I've had a look at this my whole life. So at certain parts of the interview, uh, you, like I said, it, it brings a person back to where they were at that time okay and it gets a little vulgar at times but it's real and i told Stax not to edit it because it was natural it was genuine it is what it is it was an interview i preached the word of god there so the message of jesus christ will get out to the lost okay so enough of all this talking holy days are holidays so let's celebrate saints amen okay the reason i'm preaching this message now is because the first of the actual New Year is coming up in April. That's when the actual New Year is. Uh, I did a message in, uh, on uh, New Year's Eve about the Yule Tide, uh, you know, Yule, which is Christmas, the 12 days of Christmas. Go back if you haven't seen that. I've done a message on Valentine's Day. I believe that's uh, the Uncovering Noah's Nakedness video. Check that out. Uh, it exposes how Nimrod is Cupid and all of that. See, because the problem is, is that all of these corporate holidays, they're pagan holidays. So once a person gets saved and comes into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we're not supposed to celebrate these things because it does bring God to jealousy. He is a jealous God and it is diverting worship away from him and giving it to these pagan things. He's not happy about it. But you don't have to lose hope because everything was and is created for and by Jesus Christ, okay? So all the holidays, the holy days that go all the way back that the Most High pronounced on Israel to celebrate in perpetuity forever, they hold weight today. And they also give glory to Jesus Christ, each and every single one of them. So we're going to go through all of them today because this is the beginning of March. I think today is like the 8th or the 9th maybe of March. And the first one, which is Purim, starts on the 23rd. Now I want to say this too. I'm not putting this out there to put a yoke on people and say, you guys need to throw an ephod on and be a weirdo. No. This is to help you celebrate God's holy days. Okay? You can't celebrate. Now in my family, we do celebrate birthdays. We celebrate our birthdays, you know. But you got to watch prior too. We give God great thanks every year for extending our lives for another year so that we can continue to do His work, right? Amen? Okay. 
So I just want to say that, you know, uh, like the 4th of July, that's the fall from light. That's a, and also the incorporation of the little season when Satan was first let loose out of his prison and went out to deceive the world, 1776. Yeah, it's not a good thing. Don't celebrate these things. So take solace, take hope, buckle up. There's a lot to go through here and we're about to get it in, in Jesus Christ's mighty name. The holy days are holidays, so let's celebrate, saints. Okay, before we do, though, actually, uh, I do have to go over a couple little things here. With the uh, Hebrew and Gregorian calendar, it's known as Anno Mundi, because that is, you know, the world that we live in. We're, you know, we're not of it, but this is what people understand. So, in this Anno Mundi, the Gregorian and Hebrew calendar, the way it works is that they take the number 3,760, and they add 2021 to, to that number, and that's how you get the date, if it's before September. If the date is after September, you take 3760 plus one plus 2021, and right now, currently in 2024, that would equal year 5,785, or 5,784. We are uh, before September now, so it will be the 84, technically speaking. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Okay, so let's get it in. Purim begins on March 23rd of this year to March 24th. And what it really means is to rest from one's enemies, okay? Uh, Adar is uh, in the bunch, much the month of February to March. And another interesting note about this is that this is actually when Moses was born, and he also died on the same day that he was born, which is the seventh of Adar. Now, I want you to take note of this. The seventh, he was born in the completion, and <laughs> when he died, he died in the completion on the seventh. That's amazing. Praise God for that. But Purim, we're going to go to the book of Esther to see the roots of Purim, and what it is to take rest from one's enemies. So the way you can incorporate this into your life today, brothers and sisters, is to literally rest in Christ, forget what your enemies are saying, doing about you, and count it all joy. All right, so Esther chapter 9, 17 through 23, on the 13th day of the month, Adar, and on the 14th day of the same rested day, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. You see that? So make the 23rd of March, which just so happens to be my son's birthday, make it, he's got a double holiday, double portion. Praise God for that. Make it a day of feasting and gladness in Jesus' name. Verse 18. But the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the, on the 13th day thereof, and on the 14th thereof, and on the 15th day of the same day they rested, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month of Dar a day of gladness and feasting, and a good day, and of sending portions to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both high, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Dar and the 15th day of the same Yearly, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month was in the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy. So look at that. Take rest from your enemies. Whoever's hating on you, good. Let them hate. That's 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 actually a good thing because you're doing it right. All right. So let them hate and take joy from it. I mean, who cares what they do? All right. Turn your sorrow into joy and from mourning into a good day. Praise God and that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions to one another in gifts to the poor. Are you hearing this? And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun and as Mordecai had written unto them. Praise God for all of that in Jesus Christ's mighty name, okay? Now, we got to keep it moving here because we got to go through the whole year and get these holy days in. Now, remember, these are things you you don't need to celebrate, but you should celebrate. Especially if you're celebrating pagan holidays. Now, stop it. It's stupid. Don't do that. Do what God wants you to do. Right here. Check it out. The next one is Passover. Oh, my God. So, this year, Passover begins on April 22nd, 2024. Christ rode into Jerusalem. Okay? Now, the Hebrews would also sacrifice the lamb 
yearly for the sins of the people. Now we know, we can take this now, because we know Christ is the eternal Lamb of God, and He is our Passover. Amen? Okay, so let's see what we're supposed to do here. So let's go to Exodus 12 and look at verses 43 through 47 and see what thus says the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. So actually, it's exclusive to us saints. Devils and heathens, they don't celebrate the Passover. So why should you as a saint of God celebrate the devil's days? They don't celebrate ours. We definitely don't celebrate theirs. Amen? Okay, let's keep it moving. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. So that could be looked at as a circumcision of the heart. Now you're worthy to eat the Passover. A forwarder and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth out of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. Amen. Now another scripture we can go to here for the modern times is 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 24 through 25. This is on the Passover. In Jesus' name. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now this is very important because that's talking about communion. Okay, now we're going to get to the second step of that because Christ was crucified on the Passover and uh, it, it leads in to um, a seven-day feast of unleavened bread. Now I want to just say this. Um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, a couple years ago, I mean, we, we do celebrate it every year, but a couple years ago, we went really hard with it. We literally ate lamb for seven days straight. Like, we got so tired of eating lamb. We took all yeast, which is leaven, out of the house, which represents sin. So during this time after Passover, going into the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a week-long festival, so a week of celebrating, okay? You're supposed to, this is how you use it today. Focus on removing sin out of your life. So if there's something you're struggling with, if you have secret sin, or there's an error area in your life, you might be in error, you might be doing something you know you shouldn't be doing, really focus on that, getting rid of that in Jesus' name during this time, okay? So let's continue here. So the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread takes place right after the Passover. So from 423, so April 23rd through the 29th of this year, will be the Passover. Now another thing to do during this time is to uh, take communion daily during the Passover. This is not a yoke to put on people. This is something that needs to be taken very, very seriously because if one does communion the wrong way or with, with not a pure heart, not now I'm not saying that because look, none of us will ever be without sin. We will always sin. That does not make us sinners. But that's why we have to ask God for forgiveness, okay? It might not even be intentionally. There might be something we do that's offensive to God and we don't even know we're doing it, okay? That is okay. So what I'm saying is remove what you know you need to remove and take communion, okay? Because that is the renewing. There's a real, it's a big covenant with God, communion. Jesus really instill this in us, okay? So for this, let's go to a uh, scripture. Let's look at Ezekiel 45, verse 21. In the first month, which would be April, in the 14th day of the month, ye shall have the Passover. A feast of seven days, unleavened bread shall be eaten. Amen. Now, next scripture to go to regarding the feast of unleavened bread is 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. Purge out therefore the old leaven, which is what we did literally with the yeast a couple years ago. You guys don't have to do that. That ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, which are sinful, right? So, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Praise God for that. 
Third scripture now we're going to go to for the Passover. Uh, not the Passover, but Unleavened Bread. Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is seven-day festival. Seven-day holiday, guys, come on. The devil don't give you that. Well, he does with Christmas, but whatever. Exodus 12 and 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day shall... Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. So look at that as any sin, anything unclean in your life or not good. Put it out, throw it away, seal your sanctity with communion in Christ and be regenerated anew. Let the Lord do all the work as he always does to remove an addiction off of your life or whatever it may be. Okay? In Jesus' name. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day shall be cut off from Israel. Do you see how it used to be? Like it was really some serious consequences to not follow this stuff. So people really need to take it serious. Now, next coming up on April 28th of this year is the Feast of First Fruits. We are always, from the beginning of time, we're supposed to give God the first of everything we have. In the days of harvest, we give God the first of our fruits, right? We dedicate our first son to the Lord. We see this with Samson. He was dedicated as a Nazarite from birth. He didn't cut his hair, grow a beard, none of that. So first fruits, how do we celebrate the first fruits today? Well, let's take a look at it, okay? Now, also, what does it mean to us spiritually today? First fruits would be the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Uh, don't confuse that with Easter Sunday, okay? Because that doesn't even make sense. Because if Christ was, was uh, crucified, which he was, on the Sabbath day, on the Passover, okay? Which would be, uh, well, technically it would be a Friday sunset, right? Okay. So from Friday sunset to Sunday morning, is that three days? No, it's not. So, you know, that crap can go where it goes in the garbage. We're going to go, however, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23, and see what thus says the Lord about this. First fruits, in Jesus' name. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming. That's beautiful. So we come after that. Christ is the first fruits. Now, we're also going to go to the uh, Gospel of Matthew to get a little bit more context here. Uh, chapter 28, we only got two verses though. We're going to do verse 1 and then follow it up with verse 6. So, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Now, verse 6, he is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Now, you know what's so amazing about that? Because they came to anoint his body, you know, not to anoint his body, well, yeah, but to, uh, for the funeral, you know what I'm saying? Because when Christ was crucified, it was on the Passover, they couldn't do any work, so they couldn't do the funerary rites. So Mary and the other ladies, they came to do that, and he wasn't there, he was risen already, and he appeared as the gardener to Mary, right? She didn't even recognize him. That's a whole other mystery. We'll get into it another time. But he told her, don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended. Because if she would have, her uncleanness as a human would have done something. So in between that time, he did ascend and come back, okay? Because when he appeared to the apostles, Thomas, who was doubting, Jesus said, yo, touch my hand and see that it is me. So between the time he saw Mary and then appeared to the apostles, he did go to heaven, received his throne from his father, and came back quietly. <laughs> beautiful, 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 beautiful. So moving on here with these holy days, holidays, the next one, counting the Omer. And this is a long one. This goes from uh, April 23rd all the way to June 11th of this year. And we can look at this today as the anticipation of being engulfed by the Holy Spirit, okay? Or waiting for Pentecost to come, because this is what it is. This is the time. Do you guys see the, 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 the connection here from 
what was going on in the Old Testament, what they had to do mandatorily, but how it actually reflects today all to the glory of Jesus Christ. This proves, not only does it give us days to celebrate in the Lord and be joyous, but it proves that Christ is all throughout the Word of God. It's all about Him. It really is. Counting the Omer, okay? Counting the Omer. Anticipating being engulfed by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go to Leviticus now, chapter 23, and look at verses uh, 15 through 16. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow, after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Hmm, interesting. That's the uh, uh, Jubilee. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number fifty days. These would be the days of up to Pentecost, the time from when Christ arose and then ascended in the cloud of witnesses, and then the Holy Spirit came down. So that's what this time is. And ye shall offer a new, a new meat offering unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Okay. Now, the next one is the Feast of Weeks, or Shavuot, which equals Pentecost, okay? This is uh, July, not July, June 16th, 2024, this year. Giving of the Holy Spirit unto the saints. It also is, you know, if we look at it in the old days, it would also be when Moses received the Ten Commandments. That's the connection. Like, these are, these are uh, monumental times and events that took place in the world, right? So when Moses received the Ten Commandments and when the church was waiting for Pentecost and Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit came and dropped on the church. Uh, that is what the Feast of Weeks, Shavu, is all about. So first, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4 in Jesus' name. This is beautiful. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with all one accord in one place. Now, it would be beautiful if the church could do that today, and we pray that it will. In Jesus' name, we'll get it together. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God for that. My God, it's so, he's so good. Let's keep it moving here. Deuteronomy chapter 16, 11 and 12. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes, which were the Ten Commandments. Okay? I mean, it, it's just, God is so amazing. Now, let's keep it moving here. Okay, the next holy day to celebrate is the Feast of Trumpets. Okay? Now, this takes place in October 3rd of this year, 2024. Now, this can also represent, and I gotta watch how I say this because you know I don't want there to ever be a misconstruing uh, of anything that the Lord has me teach to you guys. Um, the upcoming rapture is what people would like to say that this feast uh, is is about. Now, if you haven't seen the rapture um, video, please watch that. But it does the feast of trumpets does mean a homecoming, okay? It does mean a homecoming because it was at the conclusion of the Feast of Trumpets in the first century in 75 AD when Christ did return, okay? There, I, I have put videos up about that as well, and there will be coming more in the future, Lord willing, to get more detailed and in-depth, okay? But the main thing to really hold and grasp right now about this is that to make sure that you are ready at any moment for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. 
because there is an eternal kingdom, an everlasting kingdom, which is the new heaven and the new earth that will be created after the battle of Armageddon, okay? The millennial kingdom has happened, okay? But yes, there is an eternal kingdom coming, so take joy in that. But you need to make sure that you're ready for it because the same rules apply, okay? The same rules apply. You need to be ready. You need to stay ready. You need to be that saint that has their lamp full of oil. Now, ask yourself, if that were to happen right now and the sky were to crack open and this world were to end and I'm going to meet my maker right now, how is he going to judge me? Okay? Ask yourself that because you need to be ready when this happens. Okay? This is the Feast of Trumpets. Feast of Trumpets. Okay, let's go to Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses uh, 51 and 52 for this. Okay. And behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Feast the trumpets, not Donald Trump. <laughs> For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Yes, that will happen. That will happen. Okay, next to go to here for the uh, Feast of Trumpets. And this is gonna be uh, a little bit of a long one here, okay? This is Leviticus chapter 23, verses 23 through 34. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month and the first day of the month shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Now realize it says in the seventh month, okay? Because there's a three to four month lie that the devil has given us to make us think that January 1st is the first of the year. It's not. It's in April. The date shifts every year, but that's basically what it is. That's why here in Leviticus it says in the seventh month, but it's really October for us, okay? Verse 25, Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, it shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, we don't have to do all these things today, okay? Because Christ is the ultimate sacrifice. He is the Passover lamb. So we don't want to anger God either by going into old rituals that we don't need to do anymore, okay? We're not the Levitical priesthood. We're the holy priesthood of Jesus Christ. Now, this atonement is what I had just said. Make sure you're ready. Don't get ready. Be ready and stay ready. That's it, okay? Let's continue on with the scripture, though. For whatsoever soul that shall it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So today that would be, if you're not ready, you're going to be cut off from God, God forbid. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. My God. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. Meaning, be ready for God. Be clean. In the ninth day of the month at even, at eventide, when the sun goes down, from even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. This is, the, okay, this is another feast coming up, um, which I don't believe we're going to go into reading all that scripture. So that was it. Mm. Here's another good point. We need to recognize, right, the desperate need for Jesus Christ in our lives. We really do need to recognize that. We really, really, really do, okay? So, this is for the Day of Atonement. This is the next one that we need to recognize the desperate need for Christ in our lives. So, the uh, Feast of Trumpets takes place on 10-3 of this year, October 3rd. Then, on the 12th of October this year, comes the Day of Atonement, where we need to recognize the desperate need for Jesus Christ in our lives. And now the scriptures are very similar. I'm going to give them to you. We're not going to read them all for time. Uh, it's Leviticus 23, okay, verses 26 through 33, okay. Some of these were used for the Feast of Trumpets, but if you continue to go through it, it'll take you to the uh, 
Feast of uh, Tabernacles, okay? So, now, moving onward and upward. Feast of Tabernacles, or Shelters, or the Harvest, is uh, about a week later. It takes place on October 17th through the 23rd of this year, of 2024. And this can be looked at as the eternal kingdom of God, what we know as what will be the new heaven and the new earth. I know it's been a running theme recently in my sermons, but we need to catch this for what it is, okay? So, we can catch this now in Leviticus, again, chapter 23, short verses here, 42 and 43. Let's see here, in Jesus' name. Okay, ye shall, allow, blah, ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now, you need to realize what God has pulled you out of. So whatever your old man was, right, that would be the booth the, the, that you were in, the bondage that you were in before you came to the Lord. So that's the relevance of that for today, okay? Now, let's keep it moving here. Okay. Uh, you know, for the Feast of Trumpets, I actually skipped over. Let's back it up for one second and just go to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 32 and 33, just to catch this here. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree, says the Lord. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door, okay? That is the coming of the Lord. Now, there is a separate message that I have that I will be preaching, Lord willing, soon. It's a very deep message about why Christ uh, cursed the fig tree. Uh, it goes into the significance of the palm trees and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that'll be coming, Lord willing, soon in Jesus' name. There's other stuff that I do have to get to before that, though. Okay, so Feast of Tabernacles, Shelter, and Harvest is what we were just talking about now, right? Uh, the eternal kingdom of God we read in Leviticus. Now we're going to go to Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 through 21. And this is really, really interesting stuff here in Jesus' name. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up out of all the families of the earth, this means everybody, unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So even the heathen are called to keep this one. <laughs> this is nuts. Okay. In verse 20. No, no, I'm sorry. Verse 19. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Are we seeing something like the bowls of wrath here? Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seed therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So this is talking about the eternal kingdom coming, okay? Now let's go to Zechariah 2 and 10 to just get a little bit more and finality on this because this is what happens at the end of all of it. 
Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And that's exactly what he does in the eternal kingdom, when the sun and the moon are gone. Now, there is one more feast day, there is one more holy holiday to do, and then I'm going to leave you guys alone for a day or so. <laughs> Alright, this is called the eighth day, and this takes place on October 24th, 2024. And this is looked at as a culmination of God's plan for the earth, okay? And we're gonna to go to uh, Nehemiah chapter eight, and we're gonna read two verses, 14 and verse 17. So first Nehemiah uh, 8, 14. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths, in the feast of the seventh month, which is in October. Now, verse 17, And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, Joshua, the book of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was a very great gladness. Okay? So look, Joshua, after Moses, he conquered most of the places that the Most High wanted him to conquer. Um, but there was a turning, you know what I'm saying? This is, that was a culmination of God's plan for his people at that time. He was giving them the promised land. Now, we're waiting on a new heaven and a new earth. So the eighth day, which is uh, on, I have to look it up here again now, on what day it is. It's in October... Uh, I already said October 24th of this year, 2024, okay? So we can look at this as this. The captivity of Israel, right, which was Egypt, Babylon, the Assyrian, the Greeks, the Romans, all this crap, right? It all culminates in the end, right? The, after the thousand-year reign, which happened that we know, it culminates in the beginning of the everlasting eternal kingdom of God is brought, okay? That's all I got for this message. I pray you guys were edified by this. This is not putting a yoke of weirdness on anybody. This is simply saying, look, if you celebrate God's holidays, you can, okay? You don't have to celebrate this pagan nonsense because God gave us days to honor Him, okay? Make of it what you will. Enjoy the Lord's holy days. Stay blessed in Christ, and we will see you very soon on the next one. I love all of you. Thank you guys for subbing. Please share these messages with everyone you can, including your enemies. Give it to your enemy and then go take a rest. God bless you guys. Love you. God bless.